We're going to title this this, this morning, Jesus, Mighty Vision for Man. I'm telling you, he's got a vision that we can't get a hold of, a mighty vision for man. We find in Matthew 9, 37 and 38, they're going to put it up there on the screen. I feel the presence of the Lord here today. And I believe that one we prayed for a while ago has received something from God. I believe that. So we don't want to let doubt and fear into our hearts. <clears throat> All right, Matthew 9, 37 and 38. And Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few, okay? Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers under this harvest. So he puts the responsibility on mankind for the harvest. We're to pray, and we'll have a mighty harvest. He's already given us the vision, the picture, what to do. Then we find in 2 Chronicles 7 and 44, which is a very familiar scripture to all of us, I mean 14, a very familiar scripture to all of us and see what he says. 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will give them, forgive their sin and heal their land. He puts the responsibility back where? On man, for us to pray. I mean, that's all he's asked you to do, just to do what? Pray, and I'll do the work. So Jesus has given a mighty vision, a mighty vision for this day that we're living in. We find again here in Genesis, I mean, in Matthew 18 and 19, they're not going to put that up there. He said, again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth, oh, glory to God, as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. I don't know about you, but that's a strong statement. If two of you will agree, I mean, you know, it's impossible to do what? Now, we're supposed to be in agreement. We're baptizing one spirit into one body and one mind. That means we all are to be thinking what? A like Christ thinks. If two of you will agree, something magnificent and wonderful will happen in your life. If two of you will agree. And hold fast to that agreement. Something good is happening today. I love this thing in this morning. Then we find again in Genesis 11, 5, the people, Jesus went down, I mean, God went down at the Tower of Babylon, and he said, I'm going to go down and check this out now. So the people are one. What would happen this morning if all of us had one mind, one spirit, and one accord? If all of us would be pulling together in one direction. Tom Hooten, the greatest high college basketball coach that's ever lived, no one has ever broke his record from UCLA. He said it takes 10 hands to put one ball through one little hole. He means unity and harmony. Nothing will be impossible. Praise God. Something good is happening in our lives. I mean, it's not about to happen. It is happening. And God is with us at all times. Then he said, God said the people are one and they're one language. This is the only beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they purpose to do will be impossible for them. Nothing. Now, that's what God says. If we could all be one language, one tongue, one thought, one word, one thing in God, he says nothing will be impossible with what you're going to do. He's painting some pretty big vision for us to have. I went home Wednesday night from class. I was so excited. I tell you, I was excited. I was excited because of what people were saying in the class. I could feel the presence of God so strongly. And I went home wonderfully, feeling good. Jesus says, and also the Bible says, you are fearfully 
and wonderfully made. Is that right? That's what he said. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're created in the image and the likeness of God. Now, Jesus said, and this infuriated them Jews when he said this, does not your own scripture say that you're God's? Little G-O-D-S. You find that in Psalms. I plead with God, help us all to be what he said we are. Not what we feel and not what we think, but believe what God says we are in the body of Christ. God bless you today. We ought to make a habit of going around just blessing everybody. Blessing everybody. Jesus said this in Matthew 9, 37. The harvest truly is plentiful, but the labors are what? Few. There's few can really see the real thing that God has for us. He said, I will draw all men unto me. He's talking about after he got out of the grave, went back to heaven. I will draw all men unto me, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against my kingdom. You may have some troubles in life, but I'll tell you, there'll be something on the inside of us. Should I'm going to get to that in a minute. That God is saying to us, fear not. Fear not. Fear not. I believe someone looked that up one time and said there's 365 verses in the Bible that says what? Fear not. One for what? Every day. So we're not to fear. Now, we do have fear at times, but it's not God's plan for us to have fear. Jesus' mighty vision for us is wonderful. If we could just grasp the vision that Jesus has for us and for the church and for the world. We find something here in Job chapter 33, verse 23 and 25. Something. His flesh shall be fresh like that of child. What's the first thing that comes into our mind? That's impossible. Nothing's impossible with God and those that believe. Nothing is impossible. When Naaman was baptized and he came up out of the water the seventh time, what did his flesh look like? What? Somebody say it out loud. Looked like a baby's flesh. Jesus said, Behold, I do new things. I do new things. T.L. Osborne was preaching to hundred and something thousand people in Africa. Muslims and all kinds were there. And this one Muslim was there that had leprosy. He did not believe in Jesus Christ. But all of a sudden, how many of you know the word brings faith? He was preaching the power of Christ and what he could do. This Muslim did not believe in Jesus Christ. and He had leprosy. The flesh had done been eaten off his hands and his arms. He was deteriorating. Listen, when you look up and read what leprosy does to an individual, it's a tragedy what it is. It's tr- Glory to God. Leprosy is a type of sin. Sin will destroy your life. And as he was preaching, this Muslim something rose up inside of him that he believed in Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden, he looked at himself, and he was like a child's skin again. If though your sins be red like crimson, God says, I will make them again as white as snow. Listen, you ought to shout hallelujah if you're a Christian. Your past is gone. It's not longer here with us. We are cleansed. We are made new creatures in Christ. I don't know anything the better to have a new creature in Christ and be new all over again. And then he goes on to say, he shall return the days of your youth again. That's in the book of Job. How many believe something good is going to happen to you today? Corteen Boone was preaching right after the war. This captain came into her meeting. He was a very cruel captain. She'd met him in the prison camp that she was in. He was very cruel. She watched him beat her, his, her sister to death, which was Betsy. And there he come into this meeting, and he stood behind back there. Fear gripped her heart what he was going to do. 
As soon as the congregation was dismissed, he walked forward. Fear rose up inside of her. He said, I want to ask forgiveness for what I've done. He said, I've asked Jesus Christ to forgive me, and he has forgiven me. He said, I'm asking you to forgive me, and I'm reaching out my hand to you to ask for forgiveness. She reached out her hand and said, I forgive you as Christ has given. We're more like Christ's image in our lives when we forgive. When we can't forgive, then we lose the image of Christ in our lives. When the most crucial thing happened in your life, the presence of God will help you to forgive and to forget where you've been treated. Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. I watched a thing here some time ago on butterflies. It's amazing it's the butterflies. At least a little thing not bigger than your thumb hardly. And some of them are huge. You cannot imagine unless you see that film what colorful things God has done. Romans 12 says, Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. You can change from a caterpillar to a butterfly. If God can change a caterpillar to a butterfly, mm, how much more so that we create in the image and the likeness of God and that he shed his blood for us and his stripes are tearing his flesh that we can be healed and be changed and be new creatures in Christ and all over again. And Job went on to say there's one in a thousand, one in a thousand, one in a thousand. He wants to give you your youthful strength back. I don't have the strength of a 20-year-old. I can't climb a ladder like I used to. But I'm quit saying that. We're going to have to say what God says about us. We're going to have to believe what God says. And he goes on to say, you will be vigorous. God wants us to be vigorous. We can't do the work of God unless we're vigorous in the kingdom of God and the things of God. Something good is happening. I love the song we're singing again. I want to say that again. It says, 2 Peter 1 and 4, are given unto you exceedingly great and precious promises and all of God's promises are yes and amen. Can you have an amen? amen? All of his promises are yes and amen. Something that he's given to us. The Bible says Jesus was tempted of the devil 40 days and 40 nights. And when he came out of the wilderness... Angels appeared to him and strengthened him. The Bible said in Psalms, the angels of God camps about those that fear the Lord. Someone visited Jim Baker in prison and said, you must have lost the love of God the reason you got in this situation. He said, never. I have never lost the love of God. I lost the fear of God. It's one thing to love God, and it's another thing to fear God and respect him. Don't fear him because of what you think he's going to do to you, but fear him because he is God and he deserves our reverence unto him. To fear God, to fear the Lord. And they ministered to him. How many know who delivered Peter out of prison? Shackles of chain, quadrants of soldiers, doors locked. They just had him locked up. I just feel such anointing in my spirit, not just here today, but God is telling us nothing can hold you bound because I'm your God. You belong to me. And the angel of the Lord, how many know that you got angels assigned to you? I won't read those scriptures today. Everybody has an angel assigned to you. And his angel, Brother Melvin, came and released him. And I know there's prayer being made. We have to pray. But I mean, we got to be sure that we understand that the angels of God is encamping about us and will release us from the bondage that's got us bound. 
It was the angels that released him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, Philip had a great revival in, in Philippians, Acts 8. Great mighty revival. He prayed for the sick. They was all healed. Babbed the whole city in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible said there was great joy in that city. They had great joy, but they didn't have the Holy Ghost. But they had great joy. But then the angel of the Lord, which God had signed to Philip, said, I want you to leave here and go down to the south and there wait. I want you to get a vision of him there waiting for the chariots to come by, waiting on which one to join. The angel of the Lord can instruct you to do what God wants done in your life. He's around you. I know I've said this many times, but I learned this. I hadn't been in the church just a little while. Drew Joyner preached one night on angels. Gene and I sat on the front seat. She was just a baby. Peggy played the piano. But I got a hold of that angel being around me. He said, don't you worry for your children. If they go out at night, don't walk the floor and worry over them. There's nothing you can do for them anyhow. But you can know that the God of heaven has signed an angel to them and they can look after them and do for them what you can't do. You just rejoice that the angels of the Lord is looking after them and protect them. We ought to shout hallelujah. God has put his angels around us to go minister when something needs to be done. They're all around us. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All of you know that Brother Melvin fell and hit his head, don't you? Knocked him out. Spent several days in intensive care. You know what the doctor told him? The reason that blood is on your brain, we found blood in your body because you've been taking pills of blood thinner. If this had not happened to you and you come to the hospital, you would probably be a dead man by now. Listen, angels of the Lord, we may not work to our flesh and suit our flesh, but God is working according to his plan, his will, what he desired. And I, Brother Melvin said, I've just been shouting and rejoicing in the Lord ever since they told me that. Listen, church, we need to recognize that God's angels are with us, around us, and keeping us in everything and every place we go. The power of God is in our lives. The blessings of God is in our lives. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Angels in camp about. We find in Acts, the 10th chapter, the Bible said, And Cornelius was a man that feared God. He feared God. An angel of the Lord appeared to him one day, said, I want you to send some men down to Joppa, and you find a man called Peter. Listen, church, God wants to be able to be, tell our angels, to tell us what to do and good things of God. I'm going to share something with you. You probably think I'm off my rockers. I probably am, but anyhow, I'm going to still share it with you. <clears throat> I was up here one night praying. I don't know where I was in the spirit or what. It was dark in this place. It was dark. And one of them loaves up there, concrete started falling out. Just pouring out like you're pouring out of a concrete truck, pouring down in this auditorium. It kept pouring till it almost reached the ceiling up there. And I prayed for a few days about it. God, give me a revelation. I didn't get anything, didn't get one thing. But I knew it was there. I knew it was there. A few nights ago, I was laying in the bed praying silently, not to disturb Peggy. And asking the Lord, I know you want to give me a revelation. I need a revelation of what you're trying to tell me. And all of a sudden, I don't know why I was in the spirit or went to sleep or whatever. I was standing right back up here again. It's pitch dark in here. And I heard a loud noise out the front out there. And I say, if you had no, that that will run your Holy Ghost out of you nearly, you know. I'm telling you, fear will grip your heart. And then them doors right back there cracked open a large 
monster looked through them, started looking through them doors, and I screamed out aloud. Fear gripped my heart badly, and Peggy hit me in the bed and said, what's wrong with you? And I began to pray and asking God. And God said the concrete is a type of hardness. And my word in Jeremiah said it's like a hammer. It's like a hammer. He said, I want you to see like a jewelry, a, the jeweler that's cutting a diamond. He has a little bitty hammer, a little bitty hammer. He has a little chisel. He has to be very careful when he hits that. He's got to be a skillful in what he's doing because it's the wrong lick. It will destroy the diamond. He said, I'm working with people. Little by little, I'm working with people. Church, we got to realize that God is working on us little by little and not a whole bunch at a time. Because he said, and then it, Jesus said, if he hits it, it's the wrong time, it's the wrong place, it's going to destroy it. I'm working on you little by little. And then he says, I carried the children of Israel in the Canaan land that I promised them. So they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, hindered them from going in and getting their promises. And then when it come time to get their promises, the thing was standing in front of them was the Jordan River. It was out of its giant banks. It was flooding. It said, I caused that Jordan River to roll back out of their way to get them to promise. Let me stop right here. God is saying to you, listen, I'm rolling some things out of your way. I'm little by little getting you to your promises. He said, I drove out out seven giants, I mean seven nations were full of giants. I drove them out because I have made a promise to you. Listen church, God has made a promise to us. We may not have seen it fulfilled yet, but it is the promises of God. He said I drove them out to give you the land that I had promised to you and you're going to get exactly what I promised to you. He said I drove them out for your sake. I gave you land you not worked for. I gave you houses you didn't build. He said I want you to tell my people that's what I'm doing for their lives. I'm driving things out little by little. I'm not pushing it out to the big flood. Little by little, I'm bringing you to the point that where I want you to be, I'm doing it. Just believe me and have confidence in me and believe what I'm doing. Amen. Then he said, that monster you've seen is fear. He said, it devastated you. He said, I want you to tell my people, do not fear do not fear your giants. I have beat them and I'll beat the ones in front of you. It's not about you beating them. It's about me beating them. It's about me driving them back. I'm done, done, and I'm telling you, he said, you tell my people, be not afraid. I am with you. And if I'm with you, what can be against you? Hallelujah. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. Paul said, I work more abundantly than them all. Not I, but Christ Jesus inside me is doing the work. He said, tell my people, People don't fear. And Pavey told me, he said, well, I don't hardly believe you fear. He said, I didn't know you had no fear in you. Listen, I'm going to tell you, there's some things that happen in your life can devastate you even though you're full of the Holy Ghost. If he doesn't come in there and rise up and take your side of that thing against the powers of the darkness of hell, he will destroy your life. But you ought to shout hallelujah. Greater is he that's in me. And if Christ be for me, nothing in this world can be against me. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who strengthened me. He said, tell my people I'm working on them little by little, but I'm getting you there. When I get through with you, you're going to be a star that's going to shine in this world, but it's take a little time to get you. Come on, he said, tell my people, be not afraid, be not a hurry. Take confidence in what I'm doing in your life. Oh, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I guess I'm off my rockers. Mm-mm. Praise God. Brother Don, y'all can come on if you want to or we do something else. Yeah, I'm going to just quit right there. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord for his goodness. All the day long, church, he's working on you little by little. Hallelujah, you're going to turn out to be a star for him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed be the Lord.
Hallelujah. Is Holly Gardner in here today? I can't see back at the back. Would you run down here and bring your friend with you? Just come on, hurry, hurry. Amen. Bring your friend with you. Lord of God, I want them to share what they shared Wednesday night after the service is over Wednesday night. They won't take but a few minutes. It won't take them but just a few minutes. Both of them say they're going to tell you something right now. Praise God. Ooh, hallelujah. Yes. Um, Brother Bill had talked, I believe it was last Sunday, about how we're speaking that uh, we need to speak. This is the best week of our life. And so Chelsea and I talked about it. It was so encouraging. And so every morning, Monday morning, we would text each other, welcome to the first day of the best week of your life. And then the next day, Tuesday, welcome to the second day of the best week of your life. And I'm telling you, something shifted because we both had things happen, come up and work and just different things. And normally it would have got my spirit down, but the Holy Ghost rose up in me and I had joy, I had power, I had the oil of gladness that is promised in the word. And I thank him for that. And I'm thankful for the teaching. We've got to put this stuff into practice. And when we do, we are going to see the results. And so I just thank God for that. Speak the word. It doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside, like the word earlier. You speak it. Even if you don't feel it, you don't see it. You speak what you want to see in the name of Jesus and it will come to pass. Do you want to say anything? Huh? You good? She don't want to say something. She's so thrilled, so happy she can't speak. God bless you for being here today.